Hello, I'm Richard Vobes of Old Explorer, out on another walk, and this time I'm joined by the very lovely Barry Stevens. Hello, Barry. Hello. We are standing at the back of a castle. Do check out our other video um, about that, but we're going to take a stroll along a canal. So, Barry, which castle and which canal? This is the Basingstoke Canal, and on its shores are King John's Castle, locally known as Odium Castle. Yep. Fantastic. Well, do check out the video on Odium Castle because we had a look around there. But we're going to have a little stroll along the canal because this is a, an interesting canal um, in as much as it's not all navigable. Is Most, that right? Yeah, I think 31 miles of it is. You can navigate through. It has, I think it's um, 29 locks. Wow. Mostly okay. um, around the areas of Brookwood. Um, an order shot. It actually is that goes because to, it's hilly? I uh, guess. Yes. Yeah, yes. It, it lowers and heightens. Yeah. Um, it also goes through order shot. So, um, in World War One and World War Two, it was used used to train the soldiers in how to navigate boats and how to oh, right. properly use boats and things like that. Oh, I see. And all oh, along the canal, you have um, brick bunkers um, because the Germans, when coming to London to bomb London, used to use canals and also railways yes. to navigate their way to London and other cities. So they used to sit with their guns along and hopefully shoot them down before they got to London. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So we can't walk all 30 odd miles of it. No. But we're going to start here at, um, well, we're just outside Odium, aren't we? At North... We are. We're in North Warmbrook. It's called Odium Castle, but we're actually in North Warmbrook, but it's in the parish of Odium. Right. Yes. And this river here that's running underneath the canal, you see, on the right is the uh, River Whitewater. Um, it's one of the very rare examples of a, um, a river that actually runs underneath a canal. That is quite rare, isn't it? It is rare, yes. A river that runs underneath a canal. So yes. here is the other side of it. Yeah, you may be able to even see some fish. You can normally see trout. Um, oh, shore. wow. Perhaps not today. It's very clear. Yes. So this is the river Whitewater. Yes. Uh, and, it, and it runs under the canal. So that must be going in a northerly direction. Yes. Can't really see the other side of the canal. I'd have to get in my coracle and yes. go across to see it but uh, that as you say that's a rarity isn't it it is a rarity rivers yes. going underneath the canal yes. does the canal use the river to top up the water um, I think it does as you walk along the canal you see lots of like kind of babbling brooks that going into ah, right. the water along with the rainfall obviously it does keep some some parts of the year in um, dry summers the canal can get quite low um, and obviously sometimes in the winter it can flood I mean, the canal was opened in um, 1794, I believe, um, after lots of land disputes and um, legal battles because they wanted to um, snake the canal through to Rutherwick, the village of Rutherwick, that got into some trouble with um, the Tilney Hall estate. So eventually um, just went under a hill straight directly to where they wanted to go, which is now Greywell Tunnel, which you'll see um, and that's what, that, that's what we're heading towards. Yes. Well, let's um, let's have a little, a lovely stroll along the river, and uh, have a look at Greywell Tunnel. Greywell Tunnel. Yes. taken a little bit of a stroll from the, the castle and we've now passed an area where commercial well not commercial but pleasure boats are no longer or narrow boats I should say can no longer come is no, that not right to come this far um, you'd only get boats from the canal society maybe council boats clearing and um, basically managing the canal it's I, I one of the things that keeps um, I'm astonished at is just how clear the water is um, actually, there's a, a little bit of wall here. Just looking ahead, I can get a, bit, a better view across the the old canal. This is obviously some wharf or something. At some point, you could bring your boat up, and 
it's amazingly clear it's obviously shallow now because it's it's sort of just left to its own Record, yes. devices yeah. um, but yes you were saying it's a place of special scientific interest it is yes because of the wildlife you have here you have rare um, insects such as um, dragonflies um, birds flora and the bats that um, are roosting in the uh, tunnel at the end of the canal yes uh, looking forward yes, to, to the watered canal to seeing the, the tunnel yeah. um, so it was it was opened as you say at the end of the 18th century yes, 1792 I believe and ran for about 140 years yes it did and and then closed around in the 1930s in, in the early 1930s the um, bridge uh, sorry the tunnel collapsed um, in on itself um, the canal wasn't profiting very well anyway like um, yeah I mean it's interesting because so many of the southeast canals never really made a, a profit and they all went over budget didn't yes, they and this one went twice over budget so oh already they lost money <laughs> oh dear yeah yeah so the people who invested in that didn't make very much no they didn't apparently they wouldn't make more on uh, the tourist aspect than the actual trade right um, oh how interesting yes yeah certain people you know for rich um, Victorian people would come and rent boats and things like that and so what sort of um, because this met up basically it met up with London through yes. the river way or the, the yeah uh, yes at um, Weybridge at Weybridge yes it goes past Woking into Weybridge and then the Thames and then down to Basingstoke yes the sort of produce that was coming up there presumably going up was lots of farming goods yeah. I imagine agricultural flour and, goods flour yeah. timber coal chalk yeah. as well I believe they used to all the transport stuff. yeah um, and and Basingstoke I you see I don't know much about Basingstoke because it's so modern now isn't it well Basingstoke itself is a um, modern town really it really only goes back a couple of hundred years as you know right it now. It, it obviously had settlements on it and buildings before but Basing or old Basing as we know it would have been would the, have been the original a, yes. you know, more history involved in, in Basing and Basing house let's take a, a, a another stroll um, yes it's I mean it's the thing to remember for those people who don't know much about canals of course is that roads were awful for taking yes. um, any sort of quantity of heavy goods such as coal or flour or anything anywhere um, and and water was the perfect solution provided you could get permission to cut your channels yes um, because not every river went where you wanted it to so hence yes. canals many landowners did not want the canal going through their land and no there was many legal disputes with that which happened a lot with this end of the canal um, they wanted to snake the canal around to Tilney Hall estate which they were having none of it so eventually they just thought well we'll tunnel through Greywell Hill which they have done um, just up here and built the Greywell Tunnel. I'm excited now Barry. Yes me too. Uh, we've come up to the tunnel you've obviously been here many times. Yes I've been here lots. So there are a whole variety of bats in this tunnel I'm not yes. surprised you get them in railway tunnels as well as uh, canal tunnels and how terrific that it's it's not even um, got metal bars in front of it. A little bit further in you'll see oh, the gate. It never used to um, decades ago but they've um, and it's obviously quite dangerous being it's collapsed halfway through ah yes let's just see if I can poke the camera oh yes there we go I don't know how much of that you can see how long is the tunnel the tunnel is nearly 1300 yards long you know your stuff don't you Barry it's quite long <laughs> yeah. um, if I stand here you can hear the echo as I peer in and there's a plaque above and what are the, you know I, I'm always um, impressed by the the Victorian builders because yeah. they never built anything that just didn't look good did no, they, they didn't they you had know. style they definitely had style they had, it's just a tunnel and the tunnel entrance even though it's made out of just simple brick um, it does look stunning it does and uh, in, in some ways the uh, the greenery hanging over it now is it sort of adds to it doesn't it, it does yeah and you can see some old graffiti in the in the brickwork there uh, let's have a look I'm just making sure if I step backwards I'm you might hear a big splosh oh yeah there we go 
I love seeing graffiti from yeah. uh, you know years ago yeah. because it's just that living proof yes, that somebody yes, yeah. was here. Yes. And that somebody, you know, waiting to go through the tunnel perhaps. And the tunnel itself um, has the largest roosting um, population of bats in the United Kingdom. The largest, Be believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That is incredible. It's and and all sorts of different. Red. It's got. Um, I think it's famous for its natter bats. And it's um, long, long-eared brown bats as well, which are considered fairly rare. So let's uh, we'll just go and stand on the on the very top. I'm interested that it it lasted the hundred and forty yes. odd years, whatever it is, and then it collapsed, which saw the end. I suppose yes. in the 1930s it was pretty much at the end of the canal era it anyway. Was. Hence why they closed trade on the canal around that time. Yes, I think it collapsed because. The earth was chalk on one side and clay on the other, which caused a weakness in the tunnel itself and eventually gave way. So, And so that was that. Yeah. But it, it, it's lucky it hadn't collapsed earlier, really. Probably, yes. Because um, presumably up until then it was, it was being used. It was being used, yes. Not very profitably, but no. yes, it was used. Well, there it is. That's our, our view down. Have a look at this. Down there. And it would have disappeared. There's a... There's a, there's a fence here now, and I can't see what's on the other side, but if I raise my hand like this, you can. <laughs> the other side, um, is that a dead end? Uh, no, you can walk the derelict part of the canal. They've um, cleared the path, so there's pathways along the canal. It's got no water in it, except for very occasionally it's got puddles here and there. Oh, right. How, long, um, how much further does that go? Um, it probably it used to go directly into Basingstoke, which is now a shopping mall. Right. Um, but obviously it doesn't go there anymore. It probably goes, if you get to the other side of the um, tunnel, it would go walkable for a, another three miles, I'd say. Oh, okay. Not even three, about two and a half miles. About two and a half yeah. miles. So the whole thing makes a, a lovely walk in its own way. Right. It does, yes. Yeah. What a fascinating canal. Thank you so much, Barry, for no taking, pleasure. taking me along. And of course, if you're in the area and you've walked it, do get in touch and let me know. Tell me, you know, the facts that, I, <laughs> that I've misunderstood, because I often get things wrong. And tell me what you think. And if you're a member of the Trust, maybe you'd be up for an interview. But in the meantime, Barry, it's been so wonderful. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, share, all the usual, leave a comment and uh, become a patron. Help me make more of these videos and I'll see you on the next one. Till then, thank you, Barry. Goodbye. Thank bye. you. Bye for now.